The draw works has a large spool or drum around which the crew members wrap the drilling line. Power from the engines or electric motors drive the draw works drum. When the driller activates a control and releases the brake, the drum reels in drilling line. Reeling in drilling line raises the traveling block and whatever is attached to it. To lower the traveling block, the driller releases the draw works brake. The force of gravity pulls the block down. The driller controls the descent by applying the brake to slow or stop the downward travel. The smallest draw works are around 550 horsepower, while the largest have 4,000 horsepower, about 400 to 3,000 kilowatts. Small draw works can handle wells drilled to around 3,000 feet, 1,000 meters deep. The largest can handle 40,000 foot or 12,000 meter depths. When the driller moves the brake handle down, the draw works brake bands exert friction on both rims of the drum. We're only showing one rim to keep it simple. This friction slows or stops the drum. When the driller lifts the brake handle a small amount, tension on the bands eases. With tension eased, the draw works drum rotates a small amount to gradually lower the load. When the driller lifts the handle up fully, the bands do not touch the drum rims at all. The drum rotates freely and the load drops in free fall. Many new draw works use a disc brake system. Disc brakes are more efficient than drum brakes. A typical disc brake system consists of three major components. Two discs, one on each end of the drum. A hydraulic operating system, which you can't see here. And caliper and pad assemblies. The system has six service calipers, three on each disc, and two emergency calipers, one on each disc. When the driller engages the brake, hydraulic pressure pushes in the pads inside each service caliper. The pads contact the disc and slow or stop the drum. If hydraulic pressure fails, the emergency calipers set automatically. Mounted on the end of the drawworks drum shaft is an electrodynamic brake. It is an auxiliary brake that uses powerful electromagnets. The electromagnetic force works against the turning force of the drawworks drum shaft. It assists the mechanical drum or disc brake you just saw. It controls the speed of the load as it goes down. The driller cannot control the load speed with the drum or disc brake alone. The weight of the load, plus the tremendous inertia it creates when moving, is just too great. So, the driller activates the electrodynamic brake. The electrodynamic brake provides most of the braking force when the drawworks drum is turning. The most modern drawworks braking system does not use an electrodynamic brake. Instead, the drawworks is powered by a special computerized motor and control system. 
The computer control system allows the drive motor to power the draw works and provide the auxiliary braking force. Mounted on the draw works near the draw works drum is a crown saver or a crownomatic, a brand name. A crown saver keeps the driller from accidentally raising the traveling block into the crown block. It has a probe that activates an air actuated toggle switch if the driller takes in too much drilling line onto the drawworks drum. Too much line indicates that the driller has raised the traveling block too high in the mast. If he raised the block any more, it would crash into the crown block or separate the rotary hose, causing a lot of damage. Too much line on the drum activates the toggle switch. The switch then immediately engages the drawworks brake and disengages the drawworks clutch. Clutch disengagement disconnects the drawworks drum from its power source. The latest drawworks use an electrically actuated crown saver system, but still maintains the pneumatic crown saver as backup.